Hey YouTube, Jonathan here, and for this Axis and Allies classic video, I wanted to focus on Germany. Now Germany goes second in turn order, the Soviet Union being the only country to go before it. And what the Soviet Union does, or what it's allowed to do if you play with Axis advantage rules, is going to have a big influence on Germany. <clears throat> now, you are primarily a... Uh, going to be focusing on land, at least that's what I like to do, uh, and going against the Soviet Union, trying to knock them out as quickly as possible. So, um, the first thing that you'll want to do on your turn is check out Karelia. That's this territory right up here, and that is the key. You'll see it basically is the roof to Eastern Europe, Ukraine, Caucasus. Whoever controls that has a huge severe influence over these territories. It makes it almost unviable for the other side to try and contest those, or to devote much to contesting those territories, because uh, let's say Germany tries to contest Ukraine and Russia has Karelia, it can just sweep in here to Eastern Europe. Or if the opposite is true, maybe Russia has Caucasus and Ukraine and Eastern Europe, somehow, and the Germans have Karelia, they can pick and choose any of these, or all of them, if they have enough troops to counter. So Karelia is the key. So you want to see, based on what units you have you can attack with, is it practical, or is it plausible that you might be able to take Karelia? And remember, at least on your first turn, you do have this transport here, so while tanks can move two spaces and get there from Berlin, you could move two infantry up with that transport. Or Western Europe, these tanks can't get over here. You could pick up a tank and an infantry and drop them off as well to get a little more firepower. Chances are, if you're playing with an experienced Russian player, Karelia is going to be very heavily defended, and you probably won't have the means to take it out. But that is something every turn you always want to be monitoring what's going on there. And if you can take it, and you aren't so many turns in that England and the U.S., you know, over here are causing trouble, and you have to watch out for them, you want Karelia if you can get it. If you can't get it, you're going to be looking at whatever your border is here, whether it's Eastern Europe to Ukraine, if the Soviets took it, or maybe Ukraine to Caucasus. And you know you're not going to be able to hold all of these. So you're going to be looking to see if maybe you can take one territory uh, easily. Maybe send in two infantry and your fighters or something like that to just take the territory with leaving a minimum of units behind. I said two infantry just in case, let's say the Soviets have one infantry and it hits. You're still able to take the territory. But you don't want to expend... Uh, even moderate resources to do it. Um, just, you know, a couple infantry and the fighters and make sure the fighters land somewhere safe is what you'd want to do if you don't have Karelia. Your bottleneck against the Soviet Union is going to be Eastern Europe right here. Which means if you can't take Karelia, you're going to want to push as much forward as possible. Um, again, without leaving yourself, you know, vulnerable to... UK or US uh, amphibious assaults, of course. But everything else you're going to want to move to Eastern Europe. If you have enough there such that the Soviets will not attack you, you can stockpile tanks in Berlin because if you do decide to make a push, infantry one space, tanks two spaces, fighters can be anywhere as long as they can make it there uh, and then land safely. So you're set there. <clears throat> Now, as far as n the Navy situation, because you really need to be clearing out uh, the British Navy, and there are co several different combinations of things that you could do. Here is just one of them. Now, remember, when I uh, walk us through this, battleships are single hit in this version. So you don't need... And transports can fire back, and they can also be taken as casualties, which is going to change our dynamic from later versions of Axis and Allies. One of the things that you may have noticed about this board is that the Sahara Desert is no longer impassable. 
so you might as well get some free production. This tank can blitz like that, which means you get this for free, essentially, because there's nothing in it, and it can move forward to here. You uh, are going to want to, in this scenario I'm outlining, you do want to try and take Egypt, and you actually have a slight disadvantage with this setup, but you can pick up a couple guys from here, drop them off. The sub um, does still get its first hit, but... You can send, if you're feeling a little squeamish about that, you could send an extra fighter there. Um, you could send a bomber down here, which should pretty much guarantee you're going to get Egypt and have several units left over to either drive this way or move this way or possibly both. I would say move this sub up this way, take out that transport. Then send... Uh, a couple fighters, anything that you aren't already using, um, which it looks like at this point, uh, one, two, three, we've at least have this fighter over here and possibly a second fighter. Uh, actually, let me count my spaces. So we've got at least one fighter over here, two if we didn't send an extra fighter here, and then we could possibly send this fighter down here as well. The, with the bomber going to uh, Africa. So that should be enough. Even if the battleship hits, we should be able to take it out. Maybe we'll lose a fighter, but that shouldn't be too bad. And then whatever fighters we didn't use, which we should have one or two still in reserve, assuming, you know, we didn't go after Corellia, we can send them up here, and we can send this sub and transport in to take hits. Now, if we did go after Corellia and we used that transport, we might have to leave it behind, in which case we just send the sub out. The sub gets to attack, it gets its first hit bonus, um, and it can also soak up a hit, which means that's one less fighter we're going to lose uh, when the British ships return fire. So hopefully, what this looks like at the end of your turn is that you've taken basically all of North Africa with units to spare in Egypt, to press south and uh, east over here. You've taken out the entire British Navy and that Russian sub up there uh, so that England has to take its first turn just to rebuild. Uh, and you have fortified your front right here in Eastern Europe so that, and taken a pot shot if possible at something over here, uh, just depending on what Russia has done. If Russia has left itself open in Karelia, you want to devote as much as you need to take the territory and to hold it, if possible, from the Russian counterattack, which is likely to come. And then everything else that you have, that you, or that you can spare, you'll want to then devote that to trying to clear out the British Navy, so they can't try and sneak in as you are succeeding here, or... You know, counterattacking Karelia, and then Russia counterattacks, and their combined strength is able to knock you out. So that is, uh, those are my thoughts on Germany in this game. Um, a lot of it depends on what Russia does. Uh, if you do use Axis Advantage, you have Jet Fighters, which defended a 5, which is going to make your Eastern European front even stronger. If you are playing a game where... Uh, Russia is likely to hang on to Karelia, uh, so at least a somewhat experienced Russian player. One thing that you might consider, um, especially if you have Axis Advantage, is buying a fighter, like one fighter every turn, um, and trying to turtle up with your defenses so you have uh, enough power to you know strike out, um, but you are very well defended, and then count on Japan to kind of sweep in here. Um, I've never been a huge fan about using that as a strategy, but I do know from experience in this game, um, you're typically going to just have a huge standoff between Eastern Europe and Karelia, uh, assuming that the Russian player doesn't leave themselves open. Uh, and so you have to make sure that you don't start losing production elsewhere, and you have the ability to... Uh, strike out when the time comes. So like I said, those are my thoughts. 
Um, this is, uh, I'm, I feel like I'm kind of relearning a lot of this stuff because it's been so long since I played this game. Um, but it's been an interesting experience uh, so far, and uh, I'm noticing little nuances that I had long since forgotten. So I hope you all enjoyed this video.